Mary and welcome to A Very Merry Plantmas and today I'm going to be talking about my top 10 pothos plants. Thank you so much for joining me today and if you know anything about me, I love pothos plants. They make up almost half or maybe even more than half of my plant collection and you probably discovered my channel through one of my pothos videos. So today I'm talking about my top 10 pothos from my entire collection, not just the ones that I acquired this year. And yes, I do consider some of my philodendron and synapsis plants as part of my pothos collection. So if you have a problem with that, you might want to click out this video because a lot of the plants that I'm going to be including in this list are synapsis plants. But yeah, so let's go ahead and get started. So the very first one is my mandula pothos. So when it comes to my variegated pothos plants, this one is one of my fastest growing one. As you can see, it's trailing very long up there, right next to my Neon and Hoya Crimson Princess. And it's really one of my favorite plants. And for a plant that I do think has become pretty common, it is still uncommon for a lot of people. And in some places, and even online, can still pack quite a price. But honestly, I don't think it should be. I think it should just be at the same price as a Snow Queen or Marble Queen Pothos, or even a Pearls and Jade Pothos, especially now that it's becoming more accessible. But as far as variegated epipendent pothos plants, the Manjula pothos is definitely my favorite until, of course, I get my hands on a epipendent pinatum variegata, which I kind of have but don't really have yet. So I'm really waiting for that day. But right now, the throne belongs to my Manjula pothos. And the next one, which is the one right next to it, is my Neon pothos. So this one is a great alternative if you think golden pothos is a little bit too basic for you but you still want all the perks of having a golden pothos. So this neon pothos is amazing. As you can see, it's trailing really long as well. It's also very low maintenance. And I got this one from New York, so I call it my New Yorker pothos. And it's very easy to grow, kind of like a golden pothos, but it just gives you a little bit more variety with its chartreuse and lime-colored leaves. And if you're lucky, you'll get some of the leaves that are variegated, kind of like with mine which produce some of a yellow speckle or sometimes a darker green speckle. Some say the variegation that you see in the neon pothos is just it reverting back to golden pothos. But at least in the house plant market, there is such a thing as a variegated neon pothos plant. If you prefer that, but I think that's still packed quite a price. A neon pothos costs the same as a golden pothos. And if you're lucky, you'll get some variegated leaves in it. As mentioned, it can give you a little bit more variety than a golden pothos. The next one is a plant that I also still have up there is my Syndapsis Silvery Ann. So before my favorite Syndapsis is Nergerius, the Silvery Ann kind of like took its spot just because of how well this one is doing, especially right now. And if you've seen my previous videos, you know, I have my Argerius in rehab right now in my prop box and I did give out a lot of my Argerius plant duplicates. But the Silvery Ann, I really fell in love with this year just because the leaves it's produced is a lot silver. Some of them are even like completely silver and has trailed really, really long and so far, knock on wood, it hasn't given me any problems yet. Like the Adrius does during around this time, it doesn't adjust to a colder weather, but that's not the case for my silvery end. It's doing really well and it's trailed really long. As you can see, it's part of my holiday decor along with the next plant, which is the Philodendron Mykins. So for me, aside from the Syndapsis Pictus that has that glittery silver variegation on them that looks like Christmas lights because they twinkle against the light. I think another festive pothos-like plant is the philodendron mycan. Because of its leaf that's very velvety and dark green and sometimes even burgundy, I don't know. For me, that just says holiday season. It gives the holiday vibes. So if you want to decorate with a plant for the holidays, I definitely recommend the philodendron mycans. And next pothos in my top 10 list is the Shangri-La pothos. So this pothos is one of more the unique ones because of the shape. It's very wrinkly and also shaped like a cone. When it first comes out, it is shaped like a cone and then it opens up. And then when it matures, it goes back to that cone shape again. Mine started out as a four leaf cutting, but now it's very bushy. But what I've been doing is wrapping around the vines on top of the soil. So it has been growing roots into the soil. That's why it's very bushy right now. That for a pothos plant, it is not a super slow grower like a syndapsis, but it's not as fast as a golden pothos either. So it's just kind of like in the middle. And I highly recommend it. I got this for about like $30 for a three or four leaf cutting. It's probably still around the same price if you get it online, but I really wouldn't pay any more than that 
for a Shangri Ulala Pothos or a Shangri La Pothos. The difference is the Shangri Ulala has that Oria or Alba variegation, and the regular Shangri La doesn't have that variegation. It's just green, but this one produces both. It has green leaves, it also has leaves that has that golden or Oria variegation in it, kind of like with the golden Pothos. But yeah, so this is number five in my top 10 pothos. And number six on my top 10 list, and by the way, this is not in ranking order. This is just like the order of me mentioning them. And this one is the Epipenum Skeleton Key. So this one is a more juvenile form of the Epipenum Skeleton Key. A more mature one would look something like this. And I did get this as essentially as a cutting as well from the plant here in Chicago. It was a much bigger leaf though, and you could really see how it will be a skeleton key pothos. If you hear snoring in the background, that is my dog. But yeah, so the Abrapenum skeleton key that I have is in a more juvenile form right now. So it looks more like a regular Abrapenum pinatum. So when you're trying to buy a skeleton key in its juvenile form, just make sure what you're getting is a skeleton key and not the Abrapenum pinatum. I mean, the Abrapenum pinatum is still a great plant, but if you wanted a skeleton key, just make sure what you're getting is actually a skeleton key. The next plant that I'm talking about is a plant that will always have a place in the top 10 list, which is the Cebu Blue Pothos. So this is one of my favorite pothos plants, not only because it's very gorgeous, look at those silver blue leaves. This plant also originated from the Philippines. So this one always holds a special place in my heart. And as you can see, it's already starting to trail again. When I got this, it was already trailing really, really long, but then I chopped it off and propagated it to give away and to sell. So it took actually quite a while before it started trailing again but now it is and i'm really excited about that i do wish though to get the variegated version of an epipen and pinatum variegata which a lot of people refer to as a variegated taboo blue which to me i think those are two different plants but if i could get my hands on an actual variegated taboo blue why not if not i also want to have a mature form of a Cebu Blue Pothos, which if I'm patient, I could probably get one of the vines from this plant to mature and have that fenestration. But I don't know if I'm that patient. I might attempt it next growing season. I don't know yet, we will see. But if I can get my hands on a mature Cebu Blue Pothos that's already fenestrated, that would be great. I would love to add it to my collection, even though that will be a duplicate, because you know, I'm trying to get rid of my duplicates. But yeah, the Cebu Blue Pothos. So next one on my list is the Syndapsus Trivii Moonlight. Yes, I know, not exactly a pothos, but definitely worth mentioning since I consider a lot of my Syndapsus plants to be part of my pothos collection. And this is the one that's from the Costa Farms Life Trends collection. And they actually name it Sterling Pothos. So even Costa Farm considered this as pothos. So why not me? But yeah, so I really like this plant, even though I already have one of these that was part of my Thailand import, which yes, I got for a much higher price. This one I got for about $20 for a much bigger pot, but that's okay. I really like this plant. I really am glad to have it in a bigger pot. I might just combine the smaller one that I have with this next year. But yeah, I'm really happy to finally add the Synapsis Tribune Moonlight, not just as part of my Pothos collection, but my entire plant collection as well. I think I've lost track of how many plants that I mentioned, but I think this is number nine. So number nine is the Syndapsus Jade Satin. So unlike other Syndapsus Pectus that is variegated, this one is the non-variegated version. It's just fully green, but unlike other plants where the variegated version is considered more expensive, this fully green version is actually more expensive than the variegated Synapsis pectus plants, at least the ones that we commonly know. And I really like this one. This one I also got from a trade, but from last year. And it started out with four to six single leaf cuttings, and now it is this plant. It would have been trailing a lot longer if I don't keep pruning and propagating this, but that's how I also managed to keep the leaves very large by always pruning it. So in case it was actually just nine pothos plants that I have mentioned and not yet 10, this is number 10, the Syndapsus Silver Splash. So this one, also one of the plants that I'm really proud of because I grew this from a single leaf cutting. And now it looks like this. And I'm really happy with this one. As you can see, the leaves that has grown from it are really large. And this is one of the plants that has been doing well in Leica. And it actually has been in Leica for over a year now and it still hasn't produced root rot again knock on wood so i'm really excited about this plant and this one is in my ikea greenhouse cabinet 
like a lot of my plants i'm okay with it not growing as fast this one is a bit of a slow grower but again it might be just because i like to prune it a lot so like you can see here whenever it gets runners like this and like this one i cut them off so i likely will be cutting this off again just because i don't like it having runners and when i do that it tends to produce large leaves like this so i don't know if that's an actual trick that works for everyone but it works for my sandasis plants even though they're just in like a i mean the silver splash like the jade satin tend to have larger leaves compared to other sandasis ficus plants but i do that anyways because i want to maintain the large leaf growth of these plants but yeah those are my top 10 pothos plants in 2021 if you own any pothos plants let me know what are your favorites down in the comments and if you like this video please give me a thumbs up so more people can see it and if you're new here please do subscribe i come up with videos every week especially now that it's plant must i come up with videos three times a week and if you've missed any of my plant must videos i'll link the playlist up here and also down in the description check those out until my next video but until then i see you i appreciate you take care of yourself and each other and have a plentiful holiday season. Bye.